what happens when you seem to have conflicting desires, like you, you want it, but you know, or you feel like you're unsure of what you truly want, or if you can really even have it. Well, we're going to talk about conflicting desires today. So you can get more clear and manifest what you truly desire today on Awakening with Amy. Hi, welcome. I'm Amy Valentine, certified life coach, hoping to awaken within you a mindset that you can be, do, and have any desire. And that's what this video is about today. We're going to talk about desires in a little bit different way because I really feel like awakening to our desires is what we're here to do. And that's why I'm doing these videos so we can all learn together on how to just allow our good, allow our desires to manifest so we can have that life experience, right? So what if, you know, so often we think, you know, working hard and efforting is the only way to get what we want, but what if the key to resolving that internal conflict, you know, a desire comes to me, but I feel like I can't have it or I can't do it or be it, that it creates that internal struggle, right? I should, but should I, shouldn't I, you know, what if the key wasn't in choosing one thing over another, like a compromise? What if the key was to allow them to coexist and show you a deeper truth that maybe the conflict is, is, is not really a problem, right? Maybe it's an urge to show you somewhere in your life where you want to expand or experience more. Okay. So understanding desires that seem to be in conflict, you know, like I want to make more money, but I don't want to work harder, or I want to have children, but I'm not ready to get married or, um, what else? God, there's a ton of them, right? I, I, I want to lose weight, but I believe carbs make me fat and I love carbs. Right? <laughs> I mean, whatever it's endless. We have all these beliefs and assumptions that create the internal struggle and conflict in our lives. And, you know, maybe we're looking at it all wrong. Maybe when we have that conflict within, it is a prompt. It's an, a, it's a, it's your inner being talking to you, prompting you to question the validity of what you're believing to be true. So Neville Goddard did a lecture. He held a lecture in 1948. And one of the attendees asked a question. And I think it illustrates this concept really well. The attendee asked Neville, well, what if I have a desire and it's not going to manifest on time? What happens then? And Neville's answer was so profound. I mean, I wrote it down. So I'm going to tell you the first part of what, how Neville answered this question. This is what he said. When a desire is upon you, that is the time to accept your wish in its fullest. Perhaps there are reasons the urge is given you at this time. Really let that sink in. That is so powerful. Perhaps there's a reason you were given that urge at this time. He goes on to say, Neville's response, he goes on to say how our reasoning mind cannot fathom how to let yourself have your wish fulfilled. It just can't. It just, cause it's like, oh my God, you know, it's just, it has, it, it just blocks it. It blocks the fulfillment because it's, you're trying to reason something that the heart just feels and knows to be true. And it's your heart, your, your higher self that's urging you forward. And Neville goes on to say that it's your fourth dimensional self, you know, that non-physical you, the soul, the inner being 
that is giving you that de desire. And it's only in your mind that those desires are in conflict because the essence, this is so powerful of all desires is the same. It's for your expansion. All desire is a divine urge to create, to have a physical, tangible life experience. So if you want more money, it's not impossible. It's possible. It's already yours. If you want love in your life, you want a relationship, it's yours. But what do we do? We start thinking of all the reasons we start arguing for our limitations and all the reasons why we can't have it. And we're creating the inner conflict. We don't even know we're doing this. Why? Because we're believing something that used to be true, but it's no longer true. So it's limiting us in this moment. And that's what you do. When that conflict arises, that new desire, it's always going to bring up conflict. That's the crazy part of this game. But if we fight it and resist it, we're creating more conflict instead of asking that desire. What are you trying to tell me now? What am I expanding into? What am I wanting more of? That conflict, that contrast is showing you how to get more clear if you just allow yourself to listen, not to the mind chatter, but to your heart. Your heart just feels and knows the truth for you. It feels like ease. It feels like satisfaction. It feels like excitement. It feels like, hmm, curiosity. Let me try this. It does not feel like judgment or pain or hard work. I have a client that illustrates this really well. And the main topic of our sessions often she wants to talk about is her relationship. She's in a relationship with a, a person that has narcissistic uh, personality traits, right? So she keeps this relationship alive by trying to figure it out, trying to figure him out, trying to figure out why she would be with somebody that causes her so much pain. And I always tell her the same thing. The only reason that you're living what you don't want is because you believe in your non-fulfillment. You can't have two thoughts at the same time. You can't be fulfilled and unfulfilled at the same time. So pay attention to what you're living because that's what you're believing to be true. Pay attention on how you, you are talking to yourself and talking about your possibilities because that's what you are going to make true. So all desires are divine. I told her her desire to have a happy, healthy relationship is a divine urge for her to be more. And the only thing that's preventing her from living that reality is by, by believing in struggle. We believe it in. We don't have to struggle. Fear not, little flock. It is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. That's Luke. Fear not, little flock. Well, what's a little flock? The little thoughts. The little thoughts of doubt, fear, worry. It's the devil, right? It's the devil energy, right? The devil's not real. The devil is created by the lack of love. There's only, like Abraham says, Abraham Hicks, everything is one thing. One end of the stick is the fulfillment of it. One is, is having of it, right? And the other end is non-fulfillment. It's the fear. It's the lack. I'm lacking right now. You can never lack. You can only believe in lack. And then it shuts out the love, the abundance. It's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. The kingdom is, is your wish, is your desires, is the fulfillment. Why? The father, source, God, infinite intelligence. Why is it? That energy is good pleasure because we're one with it, because we are a creation of that energy. And that energy of source can only know itself through a physical experience, through us. So desires are divine. They're urges to create, 
Don't allow the resistance to have power over you. Ask it. Question it. When you stare it in the face, it fades. When you stop fighting your desires, they'll stop fighting you. And your fulfillment just naturally rises. So embrace the conflict. Embrace the contrast. It is your expansion. It's showing you that you're already more. So let yourself go. Embrace the journey. Trust your heart. Lighten up. That's what all the spiritual teachers talk about is that enlightenment, all it is, is us lightening up. Stop taking our life so seriously and have more fun. Stop believing in the struggle. The conflict in your mind only becomes a struggle when you believe in non-fulfillment. So remember, it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So practice that. Tell yourself that until you believe it, until you know what your inner being already knows about you, that you can be, do, and have any desire by allowing your good. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for liking, sharing the video with your family and friends. Thank you for subscribing. Uh, you know, we're learning, we're growing together, and I'm so grateful and thankful. Have a great day.